Hi, how's it going? I'm Greg. I am the Game Dev Coach, and I'm going to teach you how to build games. Did you know that you can learn a superpower? Sound crazy? Yeah, it might. See yeah, the X-Men t-shirt I'm wearing? Well, X-Men, they did not learn their superpowers. They were born with them. But I believe you can learn the superpower of bringing an idea to life. It starts here. It doesn't look super fancy, but neither does learning how to hold a golf club or learning how to mix paints. Any of the fundamentals don't necessarily look super fancy. I'm a programmer, so yeah, a lot of programmer art. Don't let that turn you off. The fundamentals of what I'm going to teach are the same across the board in any kind of game that you want. You've got certain elements, they're the same. Without further ado, let's jump right in. So I'm going to assume that you've got Unity downloaded and installed. You'll have to create an account for Unity as personal edition or student. You'll have to register the editor that comes with it. Now I'm going to be using Unity 2019.4. This is what's called the LTS version or the long-term support. It's not the newest version that is available. That's a good thing. Um, LTS version basically just means this is stable. It's going to be updated for a long time. If you're using the new version, the 2020 versions, there can be problems in it. Even though I'm recording this video near the end of 2020, I'm still using 2019.4 because it's more stable. The features that are in there are good. It's got some things like the WebGL exporter that 2020 doesn't have yet. So I would highly recommend using 2019.4 to follow these videos, even if it's 2020 or 2021. Okay, so we're going to start a new project. As I said, I assume you've got Unity downloaded, installed. Maybe even you ran it once. Great. You should start with this new screen when you go to New Project or in the Hub. You say you want to add something new. And I can go over that in a future video if need be. But for now, I'm going to assume that you've gotten to this point. So we want a 3D project. Um, you don't need to mess with the different pipelines. I would suggest learning 3D to follow along. There's All the concepts are the same, but if you do exactly what I'm doing, rather than trying to do the 2D version of it, because there are a few things a little bit different, you'll, you'll be able to follow along much smoother. If you want to give it a name and give it a location, I'm calling this the How to Build Games Intro 2020. I'm going to go ahead and hit Create. So first we're going to talk about Unity's interface. I'm going to show you how I like to set it up. I again strongly suggest that you do the same so that your screen looks like my screen. This will also help you as you get more familiar with it to be able to customize it as you so desire later on. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this hierarchy tab right here on the name. I'm going to left click and I'm going to drag it over until it looks like this, and then I'm going to let it go. And it's going to move that, and it's going to dock it right here. Then I'm going to take Project. I'm going to click that, and I'm going to bring it right there. Console is almost where we want it, but I'm going to click that and drag down so it takes up the whole bottom, because that's what I want there. And... We're looking pretty good. The only other thing I really like to do is I'm going to click the Game tab right here. You've got Scene, Game, Asset Store. Uh, I'm going to close that just because we don't need it right now, and I think it probably does stuff in the background if it's open. So I'm going to take the Game tab, and I'm going to click, and I'm going to drag that so it's right next to the Scene tab. I'm going to resize this a little bit, resize that a little bit. One last change I'm going to make. I'm going to click right here. I'm going to go back to the one column layout because that is my preference. So I'm just going to give a quick overview of these areas and I'll go into them in more depth as we go. This is the scene area. This is where most of your work in the scene will be happening. Um, We'll be bringing things in there. You've got a camera widget. You've got the light widget. You've got this. If you click on any of those, it's going to change things around. 
Um, just leave all this as it is for now. This is the game view. This is what that camera is seeing. And as you put things into your scene, they're going to show up here. You cannot edit anything in this area. The console, this is where error messages are going to show up, warnings, things like that. Very, very helpful. The hierarchy. So I'm going to click this. This is our sample scene. We've got a camera. We've got a light. This is everything in your scene, not necessarily in the project. And I'll explain what scenes are in a little bit. Project, this is everything in the whole project that may or may not be in this scene or any scene. You can have things in the project that are waiting to be used or not yet used. Packages uh, just shows different packages that are already installed. Don't worry about that. This is the sample scene which is what we're in right now. Again, I'll talk about scenes in a bit. So most of what we're going to be dealing with is going to be within assets. We don't need to mess with packages right now. This is our scene, which is basically a collection of different items that you want to happen together. But I'll go into scenes a little bit more shortly. The other place is the inspector. Um, when you have an object picked, as I'm clicking here in the scene, you can see over here in my scene view, things are showing up. My camera, my directional light, and again, I can pick one of those. It selects over here. And the inspector gives us different information about the currently selected object. Some of these things are going to look the same, like this transform. Other things are going to be very specific to the object, like the camera has a camera component, and the light has a light component. And next, we're going to talk about adding an object to the scene and moving it around. So, adding an object and moving it around. First thing we're going to do is come over to Game Object, and I'm going to left click, which if I just say click, I always assume it's a left click unless I say right click. We're going to Game Object, 3D Object, and Cube. And that is going to add a cube into the scene. So, it shows up here in the hierarchy. It shows up over here, shows up in our game view. We click on this camera, we see it is pointing at that cube. So hopefully you're starting to see a little bit of how these things sort of relate to each other. Now I want to take the cube we just added. Um, with these controls, we can move it around. There's a couple of different ways to do it. So if you see these are lighting up as I move over these individual arrows, I can click and I can move it back and forth and constrain it along one axis. I can also click here and constrain it along one of these planes. So that is fairly useful. I can also just kind of click the thing and move it. So let's just undo that a little bit, get it back where we started. Now the very observant among you will notice that things are changing over here as I change things over here. These three arrows, red, green, and blue, directly correlate to the X, Y, and Z of the position. So if I move that, that's the red R of RGB, red, green, blue, the X, green would be the Y, and so on. So that's one way to move something around the scene. You can just pick it, you can move it, you can move it directly how you want it, move it up and down. And all these things are affecting you know, the camera's field of view. Now, another way to move things is to click on the X or the Y over here. Click and drag on those things. Yet another way is to go in there and type in actual numbers. You can even do math if you want, like you can say plus five. Or you can say uh, divided by two. All kinds of fun things. Very helpful to zero things back out that way. Um, it can be useful in other scenarios. So let's talk for a minute about the scene view. What's going on over here is this is your object. Now I'm going to start navigating in this area. I want to get a, an angle that's kind of like the camera angle. It doesn't have to be exact. We've got that right here. But I want to get something similar. 
So over here in my scene view, now I've got a three button mouse. If you don't, that's okay. Controls will be a little bit different. What I'm going to do, I'm going to hold down Alt on the PC, which would be Option on the Mac. When I hold down Alt, it changes the icon. Huh? See what it did there? Because it's an eye. When I hold down Alt, if I left click, it's going to rotate around the scene. If I middle mouse click and I'm still holding Alt, it's going to pan. If I right click while holding down alt i can zoom in and out now i will zoom like way crazy out and i'll show you another way let's say i clicked off something and I'm like okay what the heck do i do now let me show you click cube it's going to highlight over there but if you're in this area you hit f for find and it's going to zoom right in to whatever you've got selected over here so you're good to go not a big deal the other thing uh, the other two things I want to point out while we're here, one is the 2D button. When toggled on, the scene is in 2D view. When toggled off, it's in 3D view. Now, if you click that, you get this, which is cool. If that's what you want, it may not be. And so, again, you might be like, okay, I clicked something. What do I do? How do I fix it? Just unclick it again. Um, another thing that you can do in addition to holding down Alt and left-clicking and moving around is you can click through these items and get to different views. Um, you can use any combination of this. Now watch this. If I click on this, it's going to go into isometric mode. Click it again, goes back to perspective. So again, that can be a little bit helpful. So basically, there's 3D, there's perspective, there's isometric. Um, basically, uh, there's it's a it's a fixed point perspective. So usually, unless I'm working in 2D or something really specific, I will leave it on perspective mode. That because I don't want that specific isometric. I just want regular. I'm using my mouse wheel now to zoom in and out. That's the other thing I do a fair bit, and that is going to conclude adding an object and moving it around. And next we're going to talk about materials.